What's up athletes? In today's video, you're gonna learn how players like Federer, Sampras, and Tiam get that massive kick on their serve without losing pace, consistency, or getting tight. And how you can start hitting the best, most confident kick serves of your life. Let's go. As Day Day covered in our slice serve video, which you can watch here, at the most fundamental level, you can create more power or MPH when your racket moves linearly through the ball and you can create spin when the racket brushes the ball to create that frictional force. And on the kick serve, we want a lot of spin of course in order to get that consistency, height and that crazy twist. And we're gonna accomplish that in seven steps. All right, step one is to make sure that your grip is extreme enough. Now, if you're using anything milder than a continental grip, like say the Eastern forehand grip, developing a high level serve is nearly impossible. Unless you're Simon Froond. <laughs> I don't know how he's doing this, but he's got the most wicked pancake serve I've ever seen. <laughs> and if you don't know who he is, I've left a link to his videos in the description below. Anyways, I recommend that you use at least a continental grip on your serve, where your index knuckle and the center of your heel pad are both on bevel number two. Or you can shift your grip even more into a strong continental so that your index knuckle and heel pad are closer to bevel one. Stefan Edberg used a variation of the Eastern backhand grip on his serves, and that allowed him to add crazy spins to the ball. And personally, I shift my grip over to that extreme continental as well, so that my index knuckle and heel pad are in between one and two. So start out experimenting with this extreme continental grip. At least when you're starting out learning the kick serve, it helps. And later, if you want to add more MPH to your kick serve, you can shift it back to that standard continental. All right, step number two is to adjust your toss for the kick serve, which is critical because it's going to affect how you strike the ball. Now, top players like Kirio, Sampras, or Federer have mastered the art of hitting their flat and slice serves off of the same toss. And this allows them to disguise their serves until the last minute. Kind of like this. All right, Daddy, you gotta guess where my serve's going. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> See, he doesn't know where I'm going. <laughs> All right, again. Woo. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Most players, however, will adjust their toss for the kick serve because there's simply more adjusting you have to do with your body and your swing. And you want to adjust your toss in three key ways. First, you want to toss a little bit more to the left. How far to the left? Well, if you were standing straight up and you were getting ready to serve, on your flat serves, we generally recommend that you aim the toss so that you're making contact right above your hitting shoulder. On the kick serves, you want the ball to arc a little bit more to the left so that you're making contact right over your head. And some players like Sampras, Rafter, or Tim make contact even further to the left of their head to create an even more extreme kick effect. But one caveat here is you don't want to toss too far to the left. I see a lot of players try to do this when they're trying to exaggerate the kick serve. And what ends up happening is if you toss too far to the left, you adjust with your body. And at some point, you end up falling over to the left. And then because you're pulling away from your shot and you're not able to get your body weight into the serve, you end up losing racket head speed and as a result, you get less kick. Number two, players will also toss and make contact in a lower position. Some players like Sharapova or Zverev keep their toss relatively high and they simply let the ball drop down more. While other players like Federer is doing here will simply toss lower in order to create a lower contact point. Now, I recommend that you do more like Federer and you lower your toss because if you let the ball drop for longer, it's gonna gain speed. And while that can help you to create more topspin, it's generally harder to time. And counterproductively, I see a lot of players slowing down their kick serve swing in order to compensate. And finally, number three, you'll wanna adjust your toss depth or how far forward you're tossing the ball. Generally, tossing closer to the baseline promotes a more vertical swing path. And makes learning your kick serve, at least initially, easier. And as you get used to swinging upward on the ball, you can actually start tossing further into the court. You'll see top servers will often toss well into the court and simply lean their trunk more forward into contact on their kick serves. 
And this allows them to add even more speed to that kick serve and it helps them to get that twist effect that we'll cover in a bit. Now, one really important note for your toss is if you have any shoulder or lower back mobility limitations, then you may find that this toss we're recommending is a bit uncomfortable. And that's because the more leftward and more forward you toss, the more contortion is required from your trunk. So instead, you can still hit a very effective second serve and hit it comfortably by tossing more to your left and closer to the baseline and opting more for that topspin slice serve. You'll see Djokovic and Nadal, who have some of the highest second serve win percentages, using the topspin slice as their primary second serve. And if you want us to break down this topspin slice serve in more depth, then let me know in the comments below. Now, while players are tossing, they're executing something equally as important on the hitting side of their body, which takes us to step number three, rotate your body away more. A common thread you'll see in all of the biggest second serves is that they all get a strong hip and trunk coil away from the net. And this is because on second serves, you still want to produce power through this rotation, but you also need to end up more closed with your body position at contact. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to start turning away like McEnroe. Players like Ivan Lendl, Ivan Nisovic, and Rafter hit with crazy spins, even with a fairly open pinpoint stance. And they were able to pull this off because they're able to get a huge separation angle between their hip and their trunk. So instead of rotating their entire body away, their hips remain relatively open and instead they just rotate their trunk or their shoulders away from the net more. But this does require a lot more mobility and strength within the core, especially if you're doing that for hours at a time. So as the default setting, I recommend that you start with your back toe roughly aligned with your front heel, or simply get both of your feet parallel to each other if you're using a pinpoint stance. And finally, as you toss the ball, I recommend focusing on pulling your hitting elbow away, and that's gonna naturally get you to rotate your hip and trunk. Now that you've tossed the ball into the air, the race is on. As the ball reaches its apex, players will accelerate through their racket drop and up into contact in one smooth motion. And that whip-like acceleration is what turns into that huge kick on the other side of the net. But before we can talk about the arm, we gotta talk about step number four, getting a strong leg drive because that's where the force is generated from. Now, getting a strong leg drive isn't exclusive to the kick serve, but it's even more important here than on your flat serves. In fact, Roddick touted this as the commonality between all of the best servers of all time. The commonality between the best servers of all time, whether it's Pete, uh, Boris Becker, uh, Goran Ivanisevic is, is, is the leg, you know, bending and being able to coordinate a massive, you know, legs. bend in the legs up, but being able to do it all timing wise also. And that starts with a strong lower body load. As top players toss, they're gonna begin bending at their knees while putting most of their weight onto the balls of their feet. And this, especially on the kick serve, is important in not only loading your leg muscles, but also orienting your trunk upward. As players drive their legs to the ground in the acceleration, their hip and their thoracic spine is able to move into extension and that orients your entire body upward. Now, at the same time, top players will shift their weight forward onto their front leg or into the court so that when they drive through the ground, their body is able to tilt forward naturally. And if you can't bend your knees a ton, that's okay. Just don't lock your knees up and go down to whatever level is comfortable. Once you've loaded your legs, we're ready to drive through the ground. And you wanna do this with both legs. Here's how a study by Dr. Bruce Elliott and colleagues explained the leg drive. He said, coaches often consider the front lower limb as key in lower limb drive because this limb generally supports a larger proportion of a player's body weight. And that's basically saying, because we have more of our weight on the front leg as we lean into the court, it's easier to push from that front leg. But he went on to say that, however, as the back leg corresponds to the racket side, this limb must also play an equally, if not important role in significantly contributing to an upward and forward drive of the trunk. Basically, that means even though you have most of your weight on the front leg, it's just as important, if not more important, to get a strong push from your back leg. Now, as you push your legs through the ground, that force inevitably goes to your trunk 
which moves us to step number five. You want to visualize the exact position of your hip and trunk at your contact. Just like the toss, there are three primary changes that you want to be making with your body position. First, and probably the most widely known change, is that you want to stay more closed with your body. Or in other words, your chest is pointing more to the side at contact. Now, instead of trying to force your body into this closed position, something that helps a lot of my students is to instead focus on the off-arm position. You see, on flat serves, your off-arm ideally drops down into your abdomen. And we call this position the off arm at the belly button. But on kick serves, your off arm should not drop as much. It should stay extended more up and out to your side. And if you saw your kick serve from the back of you, ideally, you'll still see your off hand at contact. And it's this counterbalancing action from your off arm that's gonna help you to stay more sideways. Secondly, players will move into extension at their hip and the thoracic spine as they drive through the ground so that their chest points somewhat upward toward the sky. And you can see already that if I keep my body closed and in this extended position, it's way easier for me to throw my racket upward and generate that upward racket head speed. And finally, on many of the best kick serves, you'll see a strong forward lean from the upper body even more than on the first serve. And this is almost a natural result of you staying closed. In order to still make contact out into the court, the only adjustment you can make is getting that forward lean in the trunk. And the more extreme the kick players are trying to get, the more they're gonna typically adjust their toss and their body position. So take Patrick Rafter, for example. He's leaning forward nearly at a 30 degree angle to the court, and he's tilting to the left, if you saw him from the back view, at an 80 degree angle. I've personally never seen that in any other player before, and it's no wonder Rafter got such a crazy kick on his serves. Now other players, and this is what I recommend most players model, like Nadal or Djokovic, will be much less extreme in their trunk position, and they'll stay more sideways, but they won't be leaning forward into the court or to the left as much. Now ultimately, the exact toss and body position that you go with is going to depend on what you're comfortable with and what you're trying to achieve. If you're really flexible and you love getting that twist serve to your opponent's backhand, then you might exaggerate all of these elements we're talking about. On the other hand, if you're just starting out, you don't have as much flexibility, or you just wanna surf without contorting your body, then you might opt for that topspin slice serve like Djokovic does. And a helpful drill you can use is before you actually start hitting the ball, go into your contact position and visualize the exact body position you wanna achieve on your kick serves. So again, you wanna be more closed, you want your body orienting upward and maybe even leaning forward into the court. Then alternate by going into your flat serve contact position and then switching back to your kick serves and try to toss the ball and recreate that. All right, step number six, the moment we've all been waiting for. Whether we're looking at Sampras, Rafter, or Tiam, all of these players get this massive, crazy kick on their serves through a smooth acceleration and upward release of their racket. And what allows them to avoid that spinny but slow second serves that any high level player will destroy is how they're generating that upward racket at speed. The way most people are taught through drills is by isolating the wrist or the elbow action in order to learn to brush the ball. And the problem is that while these might be okay for learning the initial feeling of getting topspin, if you continue to try to actively use your wrist or your elbow to generate the force, the tricep or the forearm muscles simply aren't strong enough to generate enough racket head speed. For most players at least, just like on your first serve, the key to accelerating your racket through contact comes from internal shoulder rotation. It should almost feel like a slice serve where you're throwing the edge of your racket forward, which is done by rotating at your shoulder while keeping your forearm in a more supinated position. Except on your kick serves, you're doing this throwing motion from your shoulder, but you're throwing your edge more upward. So let me simplify this. On the slice serve, you're throwing your racket edge forward and you're using internal shoulder rotation while keeping your form in a supinated position. That allows you to lead with the edge of your racket. Kind of looks like this, right? If I keep my chest pointing toward you, then I'll get a natural slice effect. But if I keep the same motion, right? I'm keeping the same swing, but I change my body orientation so that it's pointing more to the side and upward, watch what happens. Same throwing motion, now 
is able to generate topspin. And that's why the toss and the body position is really the key to mastering your kick serve. Once your body is sideways and it's pointing upward, all you've got to think about is throwing the racket edge upward through the same motions that you do on your first serve. And that's why developing the fundamentals of your serve, we're talking about adjustments and tweaks to make on your kick serve in this video, but really the fundamentals is what creates a truly elite kick serve because how much sheer racketed speed you're able to generate comes from how well you're able to coordinate the bigger muscles in your body and how well you're able to coordinate a fluid yet explosive throwing motion. And that's why we're rolling out our brand new course, the five day surf power challenge. It's gonna help you whether you're trying to learn your flat slicer kick and it's literally a culmination of years of work put into a simplified five day challenge that'll get you the quickest results possible. This is what everybody's saying about it already. Go check it out in the link in the description below and you'll get instant access to day one. And finally, numero siete, you wanna feel at contact, your racket is releasing upward. According to John Yandel and colleagues research, the ideal striking location on kick serves is from about 7.30 to 1.30 on the ball. In fact, the study found that the primary spin type on kick serves was still side spin. So these are really tiny differences we're making between our slice and our kick serve, which is why you might sometimes find that you accidentally hit a slice serve when you're going for the second serve. And if you want us to make a in-depth video on the slice versus the kick serve, let me know in the comments below. Now on the note of nuanced differences, the way we wanna create that upward brush on our kick serves is to have our racket tilting more to the left. And that'll automatically help us to brush up. If we broke it down anatomically, your wrist is more in a neutral position for your kick serves. You see, on first serves, you want your wrist in a more ulnar deviated position, or you want the wrist cocked a little more to the pinky side. But on kick serves, you want it neutral so that through contact, this ulnar deviation releasing up will help us to brush up the back of the ball. Along with this, according to research by Dr. Rod Cross, on kick serves, you're also making contact with the racket tilting forward. And this means that you're striking slightly, very slightly, on top of the ball instead of directly behind or under it. Now, I recommend that you start tossing a little closer to the baseline and you brush up more directly behind the ball just because it's easier to learn that way. And as you get more comfortable, you're gonna wanna start increasing your racket head speed. And at this point, you may notice that your kick serves start going long. Instead of slowing your swing down here, I recommend that you start tossing your ball a little further into the court, because that's gonna allow you to still retain power in your kick serve and swing fast without worrying about the ball sailing long. And eventually, you may even learn how to twist the ball out to the side. And finally, bonus step, step number eight. Guys, go watch the challenge. Click the link in the description below. You won't regret it. We've jam-packed it with tons of drills, and I promise you're gonna love it. And as always, until next time, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video.